Greetings, dear friends. Thank you for joining our group circle. We continue our work, joint projects of the Hikal group from Jerusalem and the 2025 initiative. Together, we hold this space and continue our work. Over to you, Uta. Thank you. And welcome everyone to our Jerusalem meditation project in which we work with the higher potential of the city as a group experiment of working with the energies of a place and the energies of the etheric body of the planet. So now we are in the sign of cancer and that invites us to build a lighted house and therein dwell. So we will use this opportunity to have a look at how we actually do this, how we light our house, whether it is our personal sphere or a group field, or in our case, a physical location, the space of a city. We are told that space is an entity, a living being. It actually consists of many beings. And when we humans hold the intention to subjectively light a space, we actually enter into relation with this pool of beings. And um, we take a position between the higher devas which are the architects of the space. They hold the blueprint for it. And on the other hand, the little builders, the elemental forces, which provide the building material and they weave the outer form. As we know, the higher builders live on the buddhic plane. And they hold, they are the custodians of the archetypal design. So for a human being on the human scale, it's the solar angel, a very high being that holds the buddhic blueprint, so to speak, for us, for the soul, until we as a soul can hold it alone. So for a place, it's a greater angel or deva with a whole hierarchy of smaller angels. And these greater angels, they have the power to hold and configure an area of space and all that is within it. We are told that devas are electrical beings and that they create through electricity and that actually all acts of creation in the universe take place through resonances in an electrical field. And in this field, the greater devas or angels are the positive aspect of this electrical phenomenon, while the lesser lives are the negative aspect. And the humans have the potential and in the future, the function 
to stand in the middle, to hold this middle ground as a connecting agent, like opening the circuit, switching on the light. And we come to be able to fulfill this function when we learn how to sit firmly on the stool of the director, focused on the mental plane. Because from here we can swing into resonance with the greater builders on the buddhic plane, like stretch our antennas into the buddhic plane and uh, intuit the archetypal design that is held there. So we can call it, we think with the angels. And we bring that portion of the blueprint, which we can grasp, we bring it from the buddhic plane into our human consciousness, grounding it on that level of consciousness. And from here, when we hold this intuited blueprint, hold it with our intent and in our visualization, we attract the little builders. We magnetize them into activity. According to, as we know, energy follows thought. So it's our thought that they will follow. These elemental beings will trace the lines which we hold, which we project in our intention and visualization and lend them etheric substance. And all this is happening in an electrical magical field. It sp spans, stretches from the buddhic to the etheric plane. So this is a part of the work of making sacred the planetary etheric body, building the planetary lighted house. And this work also includes piercing through the thick layers that we humans produce our non-aligned human thinking that obstructs the divine circulatory flow. And of course, in Jerusalem, we have a lot of this ancient fossilized non-aligned thought substance. And on the other side, we have a very high potency archetypal design that is hovering over the city, this golden city. So stepping into the function of the conscious self of the city, this vortex of Jerusalem means to bring into relation these two in an electrical field of transmutation and magic. So in the meditation, let's experiment with this, experience this as pioneers, of course. We are just at the beginning of trying out, opening ourselves to this uh, human deva cooperation. So, we can use the present energies of cancer for contributing to lighting the Jerusalem space and the etheric body of our planet. Okay, so let's get ready for meditation.
taking a deep breath. And getting in touch with our body, physical body. which is the receptacle and grounder of all the energies that we contact. Grounding ourselves in nature, in the earth, in the embrace of the mother of the world. Resting in the stillness of our heart, in our place of inner peace. Bringing our mind into a focus in the center of the head on the stool of the director. And standing as the incarnated soul, poised and radiant. Let us turn our attention towards Jerusalem. Gently. Becoming aware of a focal point of love and light and spiritual will somewhere within the aura of Jerusalem. Our group temple, etheric temple, and entering it, let us sense the fourth field of dynamic harmony that is already built there. Taking our place within this etheric temple. Coming into resonance with the group heart. And gently letting our minds synchronized focused in the group mind. Holding this telepathic union. And standing together as souls, as weavers in the light. And perceiving our focal point within the great network of world servers everywhere. And visualizing all these focal points all over the world, functioning in unity and coherence. And now, as a group, let us connect to the ashramic co-workers who support and guide this Jerusalem project.
sensing them being close to us. Being enveloped in their protective aura. And let us now gradually become aware of the aura of Jerusalem. An electrical field. Taking a moment to get adjusted to it. And opening ourselves now, our consciousness, to the higher devas who hold the blueprint for Jerusalem. The positive aspect of this field. We take a moment to just be receptive to their presence and function. Let us take a few more moments now to think with the angels of Jerusalem. Intuiting the blueprint which they hold.
Is someone there? Sensing now for another moment, the potent energy glowing through the vortex of Jerusalem, standing in this golden vibration. and refocusing now in the group field on the mental plane. Bringing the high vibration down into our group field. And with our united will to love, we hold this high vibration at a point of tension letting it stabilize. And now by an act of slow concentration and will, we visualize the golden vibration streaming forth into the aura of Jerusalem. See little angelic beings, golden deva builders, substantiate this vibration, weaving it into the aura of Jerusalem. Perceive the work of the trees in the city as they connect this light web through their branches and roots with the light which is in the earth deep below Jerusalem. See the light in the heavens connected with the light in the earth as one continuous fabric. See the aura of Jerusalem glow with warm golden light.
Sense this light as the vibration of unity, wholeness, oneness. Let us imagine Jerusalem sounding out this note of oneness through the mantra of unification. The souls of all are one and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve and not exact due service. I seek to heal, not hurt. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events and bring to light the love which underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all humans love. See a golden unifying wave spread out into Israel-Palestine. And spreading out further into the nations of the Middle East. Streaming further east into Asia See a thread of light connecting Jerusalem with Darjeeling. The unifying wave pouring through Asia, linking into Tokyo. spreading to Australia and Oceania. Over the ocean to America. Linking in with New York. Then further to Europe linking with London, and with Geneva. Spreading out into Africa. And spreading all over the world and back to Jerusalem. Let this unifying wave continue in our visualization to flow over the earth 
as we recite the great invocation in Hebrew, Arabic, and English. בנקודת האור אשר בדעת אל, זרום האור אל דעת האדם, יורד האור על פני האדמה. בנקודת האהבה אשר בלב האל, זרום האהבה אל לבבות אנוש, שב מורה עולם על פני האדמה. מן המרכז שבו נודע רצון האל, תנחה תכלית את רצונות אדם. תכלית אותה מורי האנושות יודעים ומשרתים. מן המרכז אשר נקרא המין האנושי, מוגשמת תוכנית האהבה והאור, ונחתם הפתח אל הרע. יהי רצון, ומחדשים אור, אהבה ועוצמה את התוכנית על פני האדמה. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of man, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
Thank you, everyone. Now we can open our space to any sharings. Hi, this is Efra from Jerusalem. Thank you, Uta, for this beautiful meditation. I will share only a small impression I had. And we had uh, we we are going through a lot of what we can call chaos now. Part of it is all over the world and part of it is really I think and now happening in Jerusalem in Israel we are standing uh, in front of another election which really fired uh, the atmosphere if it wasn't uh, fiery enough so to meet the, the co-workers and the de higher devas and, and little devas of, of Jerusalem that work with this golden light really brought some, some opening to the situation. And uh, I, could, I could feel, I could see like a very, very small and, and, and tiny line of lights here and there in, in the street. Um, so it was good experience and thank you all. This is Margo from Canada. Thank you, Uta. Thank you, Pakal, and everyone. My first impression was that this and other groups are fractals of the world group. Nothing really new there. But opening to the higher Davis holding of the blueprint was geometrical, there was resonant movement. Thinking with the angels of Jerusalem, symbol of blueprint, a resonant symbol. Couldn't see the symbol, but there was, it was, it was geometric and, and symbolic. There was sound creating shape. Strength of the symbol shape becoming stronger, more substantial beginning to radiate more strongly, sounding forth like a crystal bowl, meeting a resistant field, inroads, fiery arrows, filaments of golden vibrations slowly permeating the dense field, slowly, slowly, faintly at first, the field begins to resonate in alignment with the blueprint, streaming into Jerusalem, the builders working as a more coherent, aligned force. The importance of human consciousness in visioning, sensing, being, holding this work, this blueprint. 
the mantram of unification grounded and sealed, spirit into matter. A spreading wave becoming more pronounced so that nothing can resist it. The lower corresponding geometry appearing as the wave flows around to and through the planetary inlets. The great invocations were the human answer. May I share? Please, Elisabetta. Let me put my earphones. Uh, thank you so much, Uta, for this uh, very touching meditation. Uh, when uh, you were leading us through the different layers of the meditation, <clears throat> At a certain point, it came to mind a phrase from an ancient prayer, which is called the Mantra of Peace, where it says, there is a peace that passeth all understandings. It abides in the heart of those who live in the eternal. Because when I tried uh, to attune to those uh, higher uh, devic uh, powers, for a second I could perceive that uh, to be in touch with them, we really have to train ourselves to become, to br in order to bring that high vibration into the group field, into Jerusalem and all over the planet, we have to become conscious intermediaries conveyors between the highest and the lowest, opening to the mystery also of what this really means in terms of the highest potentials can, that can precipitate. And um, I feel so important that in our every moment of our life, as souls, as a group, we offer ourselves as a planetary group platform in a way, even if it is not so appropriate maybe, but as a substance of love and light where these precipitating energies can be and lived and brought into manifestation in our lives in order to make this reality even more real within ourselves, as groups, as one humanity, and um, to become a sort of transparent conveyors of those energies, but also to be uh, responsible in every thought, every word, every action we put in motion every day so that it really can be resonant and these energies can really found a place that is fit for those energies to be anchored. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Elisabetta. Yeah, I completely resonate with all that you said. It's quite a tall order to hold this transparency and this high vibration. And as we do so, as we do the effort to do so, really um, this world 
seems to become more transparent in the sense that we can see, we can see more clearly the underlying energy dynamics and participate in it more consciously, more intelligently. Hello? Yes. Hi, Maria Cristina here. With great appreciation for group work, it is a tall order. And I'm very thankful for the presence of all Uta and gathering us. Hmm. Uh, words from the Tibetan. <laughs> I will mention that etheric force that we are actually at this point when we're cooperating with the visualization, the energy follows the thought into manifestation of etheric force, which is the building block for and attracts eventually the manifestation. The etheric force is closely related to the monad or the highest spiritual aspect, interestingly. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I, my, I, I mentioned that because in a sense, we are not creating, we're co-creating as we cooperate, but we're cooperating with a creation which the blueprint is found in the plan. So as we souls, we add our quota to that plan, which hierarchy weaves embodying the purpose, embodying the purpose of Shambhala, the manifesting the will. And it was this line of creative power, really, that we, I believe, are asked to hold so that may, we may indeed fulfill the injunction that light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Mm -hmm. So with that underlying plan, held by the, the angelic, thank you, I could, I'll, I'll stop. That's thank you. Thank you for these thoughts, Maria Christina.
Yeah. So let us continue holding this sacred work in our heart, practicing this transparency, this magical weaving. And see you all next month. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Gratitude.